The other issue that's been pressuring markets today, rising energy prices. It's playing a big part of the stock sell-off today, especially overseas. Brian Sullivan is following that part of the story for us. And, and, and this is a huge story. This is not hyperbole, Brian. This is a very big deal and could be a huge concern this winter uh, just for consumers. The idea that can they get natural gas to make sure they can heat, the, heat their homes. Could also become a food story, and I'll get to that in a second, Becky. Thank you very much. Right, as you noted, this is a big, it is a growing story, and it could end up being, or maybe already is, the biggest economic story in the world. All right, so there's so many things that are happening all at once. It may be hard to keep track, but that's why we're here. Here's the rundown of what is happening right now. Let's focus on the U.S., Europe, and Asia. First, America. America first. U.S. energy prices, yeah, we're up here. Oil near an 80 bucks a barrel. Gasoline prices going up as well, averaging 3.30 a gallon nationwide. By the way, the highest since 2014. Natural gas, maybe the bigger story, hitting its highest price in more than a decade. But what is happening here, guys? Nothing like what is going on in Europe. Okay, in the U.K., natural gas and electricity prices are effectively trading at levels that would be equivalent if you converted to $200 per barrel oil in America. And now France threatening to cut off some electricity they normally send to the UK because of a dispute over fishing rights, literally fishermen. Oh, and now European power plants are desperately trying to buy coal because wind energy hasn't performed. And so coal prices traded in Rotterdam are up 90% in four weeks. Guys, in fact, get this, coal is the best commodity of 2021. Coal. On the other side of the planet, it's not any better. In China, they continue to have some rolling blackouts, some of the port cities, and so they are desperately trying to buy liquefied natural gas, sending prices there above 30 U.S. dollars. Keep in mind, we're talking about the highest since 2014. Here, we're at six and a half bucks. They're buying it at $30 equivalent. In the meantime, in India, which is still a heavy user of coal to make electricity, some plants have just days of coal left. In other words, the power in some areas may literally go off soon. And unless something big changes, there is really no end in sight to this. The risk is that if the weather, of course, turns colder, sooner, heating bills, as you noted, Becky, for tens of millions of people that are off these rolling fixed rate contracts are going to soar. And it's a food story, too, because natural gas is a huge input cost for making nearly everything. In my previous life, before television, I traded commodities. I traded fertilizers, believe it or not. Some people say I still do, if you catch that joke. But here's the thing. Natural gas produces ammonia, which produces most of the chemical fertilizers. BASF and other producers of fertilizers in Europe have said they're going to stop production because they simply can't afford it. Fertilizer is needed to make food. The fact that we're cutting off fertilizer production at a time when you've got all these input costs going up is actually a scary thing from an agricultural perspective as well. So I don't think it is hyperbole to make too much of this. Hopefully the winter will be a little bit warmer than normal. We won't have to burn as much coal or wind or whatever it is, uh, because otherwise it's, it's not going to be pretty in many parts of the world, Becky. And I heard um, a soundbite from a European politician, maybe somebody in Germany played at the top of your show, uh, talking about uh, it's okay, though, because... This makes it look much more affordable for things like these clean energy, for the wind, for the solar. Uh, you brought a healthy dose of skepticism to that quote. You want to talk about it? Okay, yeah. So I'm rolling my eyes if, if you can't see me, Becky. I, and again, I, I don't know who that the politician was, with all due respect to any elected official. When you got people that are worried about their heating bills or whether they're going to be able to pay them or they're going to have actually have heat, in the winter, you're coming out and you're basically like, well, renewables are, 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 are staying stable. It's like, I get you've got the talking points. You've got the climate summit coming up in a couple of weeks in Scotland. We know that renewables are the future. They're great. They're going to produce a lot of jobs and a lot of wealth, by the way. As I have said, energy is the new internet. You want to make money the next 10 years? You got to focus on the energy transition. That's why I love covering the space. But right now, when you've got these things that are going on to come back out and be, you know, you're a wealthy politician and saying, oh, renewable costs or whatever. It just, I think if you're there and you're dealing with it, you're probably a little bit frustrated by that. And you're thinking, you know, that's great. I'm all down with the greening of the world. I just need to make sure the heat works 
until next then. month. Yeah. But you know, maybe that's just because I didn't get enough sleep and I'm like tired and crabby and get off my lawn. Becky, I don't know. No. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.